Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and this is yet another Inspire interview. This time around, I'm having a conversation with Ned Jackson, who's a, a photographer, a wedding photographer based out of the North Shores of Boston. And uh, Ned's a phenomenal photographer, is a wonderful presenter as well, and I'm looking forward to his presentation as well at Inspire. And that Inspire conference is coming up right around the corner, isn't it, Ned? Yeah, I, uh, I, I guess I was a little late on the interview. So <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it's right around the corner. Yeah, it is. It is. It's coming up. Uh, you know, February 9th through the 11th in Portland, Maine is when the, when the conference is going to take place. Um, you're going to be there. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you've got a, an incredible body of work uh, from wedding photography, and you're sort of dipping your toes into commercial work and corporate work now. Uh, let's sort of rewind a little bit to introduce you to my audience and, and see whether we could figure out you know, who is Ned Jackson, the photographer? Where are you from? What is your background? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so um, I guess I go back to, I, I had a little short stint in the banking world. Um, got a little bit of, I, short four years, I guess. I worked for uh, Fleet Bank, Bank of America. Um, it was a great experience, but while I was there, I knew that I was not long for that world. I always wanted to be a teacher. Um, and actually, during that time, uh, I was slowly getting into you know the hobby of photography, and I was shooting, and I actually started doing gallery shows. I was doing fine art um, landscapes and things like that. And I was using four by five, um, doing uh, you know silver gelatin printing and going that whole direction. And then slowly people see that you have a nice camera and they say, hey, can you shoot my wedding? And so that was a way for me to fuel my hobby of buying really uh, outrageously expensive medium format cameras or large format cameras. Oh yeah, right. right. So eventually I left that job and I went to teach. And, I, and, and that was what I really thought was my, you know, was my life's work was, was to um, teach high school actually history. And loved that job. Absolutely loved it. I did some time in public school. I did some time in private school, uh, much like much like uh, your situation. Sure. Um, and it got to the point where you know I was shooting say twenty weddings a year, teaching a full schedule, coaching two varsity sports. We threw a baby in the mix. My wife's starting to look at me like um, <laughs> something's got to give, brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I couldn't dream of losing my photography business. You know, I was working so hard to build that piece of it up, and even though it broke my heart to leave teaching, right? Um, I just couldn't. I couldn't stop that drive. That's you know right. that I had for my photography. So I uh, gave my notice, and and I think that was five years ago, maybe. I can't even believe it, but. Uh, it, it feels like uh, five years ago, but it was just yesterday, right? Oh, it's crazy. I mean, I, I, it's very sad because I, I shoot, um, I used to coach up until we had our second baby last, uh, last season, so I still knew a lot of the kids and got to the point where uh, the new, you know, the, the seniors that were there, I, I hadn't taught. And then it was like, okay, so now the whole generation of kids who have any clue who I am are gone. Right. And you go back there now and it's like, you know, they, they don't know me from Adam. So uh, it's, it's, it's a little sad, but, um, you know. I, know. I know the feeling. I know yeah. the feeling. Um, let's talk a little bit about your photography. I know you'd said you'd, you started with four by fives. I mean, it's an unusual format to begin photography, you know. Well, I would say I started in four by five. I mean, my 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 whole thing was um, I love to travel, and and my thing when I would travel is I go to the you know the local you know or you know um, newspaper store or whatever, and I would buy like twenty five postcards, and then I would go around and I would just try to replicate the postcards, and I would do it different times a day, and you know just that was like my hobby. I would go to Barcelona and I would try to replicate, you know these beautiful shots that I saw of all these different locations, you know, just plagiarizing the hell out of it. But, um, I mean, the whole point was not I wasn't going to like, you know, show these or anything. It was just for me to, to get my skill and understand, right. um, I like this picture. Why do I like it? Why is it successful and how can I do it? Indeed. And then, so then you start to, I, uh, um, I've actually written about this before. I bought a, um, I bought a Hasselblad, um, and, Switching to that square format and that one lens, I only could afford one lens. Um, switching to that one lens really 
pushed me to start to understand what makes a successful photograph because it's one thing to go to a place and it's, it's beautiful and you take a picture and it's I think with the Hasselblad you can't go take those sweeping beautiful vistas and you have to really have um, some meat to the picture and so that that started to push me along um, and then the the whole idea of having the tilt shift and the the ability to play with the bellows I, I had to get into large format and really you know was enjoying that excellent yeah. Do, you, do you do you still find yourself using any of the, uh, the the film cameras in your in your wedding photography now? Uh, so I was a I was a long time holdout. Um, I mean, you know, for my career, I felt like I was the only person still shooting film. I was selling myself as a film photographer, and frankly, it's because I was a Nikon shooter, and you know, the D two hundred wasn't cutting it compared to my friends who had like these, you know, the 5D, which was like on a different, you know, it was on a different ball field. Yep. And so um, I just kept holding out, holding out, and eventually got to the point where the labs were not giving me the quality scan that I needed. Um, and I, I felt like they were drop, you know, they, they were dropping their interest and their focus on, on um, providing good quality scans and, and good prints. And then Nikon released the D3 and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I got to switch. And then that really that was a game changer. I was like, "Whoa, this is amazing!" You know, the fact that I could, I could like, uh, I, I remember thinking like I had both my cameras. I had a color and a black and white, and I'd be like, "Okay, bride's coming down the aisle. I have six shots left in the black and white, and I have four shots left." So I'd like, I would it would like crush my soul to waste four shots, but I'd like wind that roll up. To load one so that I didn't screw up and miss, you know, the bride coming down the aisle and have like two shots and be that idiot that's like changing <laughs> film at the beginning of the aisle while she's coming down. We've all been there, Ned. We've oh yeah, definitely there. did that. <laughs> Listen, uh, uh, tell tell me what your approach to wedding photography is now. Is it is it is it a certain? Okay, let me rephrase that. What is the Ned Jackson style of photography when it comes to weddings? That's a tough one. I mean, I, I, I think at the heart of it, uh, you know, I still see myself, um, you know, as a storyteller, as a, you know, as, as, you know, being there to document and be a, a photojournalist. Um, that being said, I kind of have the Life Magazine photojournalist mentality in which, you know, part of that is a, is a is a portrait. You know, if you look at any photo essay in Life magazine, they always had a portrait of the, uh, you know, of the subject. Sure. Um, and I love that piece of it. I love doing portraits. It's like my one little day, you know, moment of control. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it, it's also like a. I, there are certain days, and this is the point of my talk. There are certain days. Um, let's put it this way: certain days you show up, and the pictures just are given to you on a silver platter. Everything is so damn easy, and you're like. I'm the king of the world, um, and like you know, the lights, you know, cocktail hour has this beautiful golden light, and you're like, this job is so easy, and you're just clicking away, and the the bride and groom are just so open and emotional, and they let you in. Right. Some days, um, it's pouring rain, you know, it's pitch black. There's you know, timelines horrible, the schedule, so everything is working against you, and you still got to deliver that same. And so I've always felt like you know. If I can really deliver some just knockout portraits, you know, at the heart, I still view myself as a storyteller and a, and a photojournalist. And so, you know, 90, I always say 95% of the day, 90, even 99% of the day, I'm just looking for those little moments, um, looking for storytelling elements about the details of the day, the little, you know, all the little pieces that, that help tell the story. And, and, um, and then I also kind of view myself in the Life magazine uh, photojournalist style in that in every Life uh, magazine photo essay there was a great portrait of the subject uh, of the essay and so I, I view that as a really important part of the day too and so I, and I love that um, it gives you a little bit of control when and, and the whole point of my talk is is really about how you know uh, some days are handed to you on a silver platter and everything lines up and, and you, you walk around like you're on top of the world, the light's beautiful, the couples is just uh, letting you in, giving you full access, totally emotional, the whole ceremony, everybody's crying and dad's crying when he sees the bride and you know, you're on top of the world and then the next day 
you have a couple that's very closed off, the light's horrible, the timeline's horrible, everything's working against you. And I, I felt like if I worked really hard on getting some just dynamite pictures of the couple, that at least 50 years from now, they were like, we had a great photographer, look, we had that one picture. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they would forget about the rest of the timeline and all that stuff. Sure, and, sure. and um, the one, the one, the, the one image that sits on the on the fireplace, right, the mantle. That's right. Like I was like, if I and I, I was, to be honest with you, I think it goes back to my film days where I, I, I feel like if I could just give them one killer image, you know, every uh, every frame costs money. Sure. So it's like <laughs> this has to be precious yes. and perfect. Yes. I wish I felt like I wish I shot that way now because now I'm like the opposite of that I shoot way too much and spend way too much time on the computer but I still have that feeling that like I need to leave them with just one of those iconic images that that you know that the next several generations will be able to look to and say that's my parents and that's my grandparents and that's on the happy you know on one of the best days of their lives absolutely um, um, you've been at this for about five years you've said right so you've been you've oh been no I I've been shooting weddings now. This this will be my twelfth year. Twelfth year. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was I was I was shooting about twenty weddings a year when I was teaching. Oof. Believe wow. it or not, yeah. So I had almost you know really basically two full time jobs. So. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about your experience with uh, Inspire. I know you've been at Inspire. You've spoken at Inspire before. Uh, what is it that draws you back to Inspire every year? Uh, There's a couple things there. I mean, number one, I've always felt like um, if you close yourself off to learning. From from people, you know, I go to the I go to WPPI every once in a while, and I think it has its place, and I think um, it's super inspiring. And, and every time I'll go there, you know, you go see these remarkable photographers like the Ben Crismans and those type of people. And um, you know, certainly that's that's extremely valuable. But at the same time, um, if you close yourself off from learning from the people that are just around you. Um, I think you kind of you're doing yourself a disservice because you know just because you do something one way doesn't mean that your neighbor um, doesn't have a good idea. Right. And so I've always loved that idea that that it's a collaborative place. I'm I'm also a big believer in networking, um, and I've just met you know this is a really isolating business. You're you're you it know is. sitting by yourself ninety percent of the time, and so. Right. To, to build your network of friends and, and um, people who can support you in times of need. And, you know, I had a baby, um, you know, he was born September 18th. I, I had a wedding booked every single weekend. Um, and, you know, you can't really pick when you're going to have a baby. And so I had friends that I had scheduled as like backups and third, I had brought third shooters with me. and. You know, the fact that I had people that I knew that would kick butt um, if I couldn't be there was just such an immense relief. It didn't stop me from, you know, having heart palpitations, but uh, it was still just, you know, all of those things. So I think Inspire is so important because, because you're networking in your local community, you're hearing ideas, you're sharing ideas. Um, it reinforces that idea that we're, that we're not enemies, that we're, you know, that we can be really powerful, powerful allies to each other, Absolutely. helping share leads and all of that good stuff. Excellent. Very and it's cool. fun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is fun. It is fun. No doubt about that. You get to see um, Mark Higgins do karaoke. Oh, <laughs> I, I think I missed that last from last year, but I, I, I look forward to it this year. <laughs> hey, Ned, uh, thanks for joining us today. I know thanks for having me. we've had to play a little bit of email tag and phone tag, but uh, we got it all taken care of sorry about that <laughs> hey, hey no worries no worries i know you're a busy guy uh, good luck with uh, the rest of the year and thank i'll you. see you in a couple of weeks in inspire so, all right hey, thank you very much thank you take care bye bye